Welcome back. This is part 35 of the Amateur Extra License Exam Study. We're in sub element 7, Foxtrot. There's been a lot of parts in this. So I hope that uh, we have muddled through this as best we could. I can give you a little bit of insight into this section. Not much because digital, digital DSP uh, can be a, a whole college career just about. So let's go ahead and start. What is meant by direct sampling in software defined radios? The incoming RF is digitized by an ADC anal uh, analog to digital converter without being mixed with a local oscillator signal. So it's a little bit different. It directly samples it and turns that into a digital signal. So the wave coming in would probably look something like this. So what an ADC does, an analog to digital converter, is it uses step sizes in the sample to roughly recreate what is coming in. It turns it into digital though, so it gives it a digital value. Uh, depending on what your bit value is, can tell you the, the step size. So you can see if you have a 16 bit, you have to really zoom in to see that step size. So this is probably microvolts compared to this is probably a difference of five volts between a high and a low there. So way better reproduction with the higher bits. And that's important because you're going to see that again in a minute. What kind of digital signal processing audio filter is used to remove unwanted noise from a received single sideband signal? That is going to be an adaptive filter. And you just really, an adaptive audio filter is about the best you can do with this one. What type of digital signal processing filter is used to generate a single sideband signal? And that is going to be the Hilbert Transform filter. Now, all of this is digital, so this is a lot of programming stuff. That's why I don't have a lot of examples. And so it's all done digitally. So a Hilbert Transform filter is going to transform the digital back to an analog signal. Which method generates a single sideband signal using digital signal processing? Signals are combined in quadrature phase relationship. So I do think that I, I did have something for this. Those signals are combined in quadrature phase. It basically takes two feeds and they're 90 degrees out of phase. And then it uses the position to make that digital um, to make SSB from that di di from the DSP so it's using a quadrature phase relationship and again like I said this is DSP it's pretty deep stuff how frequently must an analog signal be sampled to be accurately reproduced and this is your sample rate and so you need at least twice the rate of the highest frequency component of the signal. If you've ever done MP3 stuff, you know, 44.1 kilohertz is usually the, uh, the basic sample rate for speech. And why is that? Because it's roughly two times the highest audio frequency that we would hear at 20 kilohertz. So 44.1 gives a little extra room so it can reproduce some of those higher frequencies with a little better fidelity. So at least twice the rate. If you don't go at least twice the rate, then you start to deal with Nyquist and the folding frequency where the highest frequencies aren't interpreted as a high frequency anymore. They become a, 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 a difference of the sample rate in that highest frequency, which results in a lower frequency, and that's called aliasing. So you can see right here, this is a 45 kilohertz tone sampled at an even slower rate, so not even 
not even one to one here, 44.75. So what happens is the signal that is sampled actually comes out as 250 hertz instead of the 44.75 or 45 kilohertz tone. So it really knocks it down. That's aliasing. What is the minimum number of bits required to sample a signal with a range of one volt at a resolution of one millivolt? So you have a calculator that we're going to bring up. Depending on the range of voltage that you need, you have a millivolt. So if you divide one by a millivolt, 0 0.001, you're going to get 1,000 samples that you need. If, it's, if you still need that one millivolt and it's over 5 volts, you divide that 5 volts divided by 0 0.001. That tells you that you would need 5,000 samples. So 10 bits. How do we get 10 bits? Well, you got to think of digital. If you need a thousand samples, you're going to need something in the power of two. So when you go two to the power of 10, that gives you a thousand twenty-four samples. So we need at least a resolution of one millivolt. That's going to give you a resolution of around a millivolt. So that's using the calculator. And I hope that helps you out to calculate that one. 10 bits is 1 volt at a resolution of 1 millivolt. What function is performed by FFT or the Fast Fourier Transform? This is converting signals from the time domain, like you would see on an oscilloscope, to the frequency domain, which you might see on a spectrum analyzer. Let me see. Fast Fourier. So this is the E string of a guitar being plucked. Bim. And you can see the fundamental frequency right here is around 82 hertz. So this is what you would see on an oscilloscope. This is using that fast Fourier transform, and it finds that part of this waveform is 82. Then you have the second harmonic, which is E3, and that is around 164 hertz. It's twice. Then you have the third harmonic is 247, so that's approximately 3 times 82. 4 times 82, this is your, so your first, second, third, fourth harmonic. And then it, it goes on and on until you just can't see it anymore. So that FFT is taking it from the time domain and turning it into the frequency domain. What is the function of decimation? So decimation is a way to reduce the effective sample rate by removing samples. I looked this one up and I remember a little bit of this from my DSP days in college and that was like 12 or 14 years ago and I haven't used it since. But the original signal has this many samples, if you, or, you know, an, a, a lot. So decimation is going to take and skip a certain amount. You still have a pretty good approximation of the, the waveform. Decimation is reducing the effective sample rate by removing samples. So this is a lot of samples. This is not as many samples. It also doesn't take up as much memory because you don't have to remember it. All right, so decimation, reducing the sample rate by removing samples. Why is an anti-aliasing filter required in a decimator? It removes high frequency signal components that would otherwise be, re be reproduced as lower frequency components. So you're going to have to have a low pass filter to use that decimator because the decimator 
is reducing the sample rate if you have high frequency in there then like we saw before something bad's gonna happen it's gonna look like nastiness and I don't even know what we did with our other picture but then you wind up with aliasing if this was a high frequency you're gonna get some some nasty off tones what aspect of receiver 80 uh, okay so let me read this right what aspect of receiver analog to digital conversion this right here is ADC if you want to look up analog to digital conversion you can just put ADC what aspect of receiver analog to digital conversion determines the maximum received bandwidth of a direct sampling software defined radio we just learned that you need to know what your sample rate is so if the sample rate is low then the um, maximum received bandwidth is also going to be low so that sample rate determines how much you can measure sample rate in digital is very important what sets the minimum detectable signal level for a direct sampling software defined receiver in the absence of atmospheric or thermal noise and that goes along with that reference voltage level we just calculated that a few minutes ago reference voltage level and the sample width in bits so they're related and so if you have a higher sample width then and a lower reference voltage level then it's going to be a better receiver which of the following is generally generally true of finite impulse response filters and this is some dsp talk it's also uh, <laughs> it's applied calculus too but Fear filters can delay all frequency components of the signal by the same amount. So fear, fear FIR filters use what's called a tap. And, that, and, and however many taps there are, it can delay and do some, some neat filtering that way. So just remember that finite impulse response filters can delay all frequency components. And we're going to see that again in just a minute with the what is the function of taps in a digital signal processing filter. The taps provide incremental signal delays for filter algorithms. So it's sort of like a memory to remember what happened a microsecond ago and then two microseconds ago. Your DSP can remove noise because it remembers artifacts of that noise and can subtract it from what's coming in next and then it remembers what that sounded like and and that's how it removes noise so hope that wasn't too much but the taps provide incremental signal delays for filter algorithms and the last question in this wonderful section is which of the following would allow a digital signal processing filter to create a sharper filter response so that would be more taps more taps and i thought that i had some taps up here so i don't think i do Alrighty, so i didn't tag nab it i meant to show you what the taps look like um it, 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 it just looks like impulses basically so it's just little lines sticking up or pointing down and at any rate the more taps that you have the sharper the filter response now to give you I tried this once I tried this on a uh, our, on an Arduino microcontroller I tried to make a fear filter and this was back when I was in college and so I was up on the times on my programming for digital filters and there's a limit to how many taps you can use because of the speed and the memory that it takes to remember all of that. So the, the, with more taps, you know, we've got computers now that can do this and they can do an, a wonderful job at DSP. So 
we made it through this we're not to the end of the sub element seven yet so we still have a ways to go i wish you the best in your studies i hope this is helping you out study hard study often 73